Support for How in the Hell Did I Get Here comes from the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet, designed to educate, create awareness, prevent addiction, and help stop re-addiction. Made of silicone and available on Etsy.com, search Etsy.com for the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet and use the code PODCAST to save 15% on your purchase. Today's stories are about two dogs who are no longer with us, but definitely live on in our hearts and in these crazy stories. First, Jenny tells a story about her Sheltie Fritz, who was one of the sweetest little dogs you'd ever want to meet. The rest of the show is devoted to stories about my beagle, Bentley. If you've been listening to the show, you heard about him in the drunk dog episode. Bentley was my first dog as an adult, and in retrospect, a beagle is not probably a breed I'd recommend to anyone as a first dog. I always said that the reason beagle puppies were so darn cute is so we wouldn't kill them. (laughs) He was adorable and so naughty, and he gave me a run for the money and filled my life with a collection of funny stories that I won't probably ever forget. Oh, like the time I came home from work one day walked into my house, and his crate was open, but he was nowhere to be seen. But that actually wasn't my biggest concern, because it looked like someone had come in and ransacked the house. And this was like before cell phones, and the door was locked, so I don't know how anyone would have gotten in, but still, the devastation was like crazy. First of all, a large, like probably four foot tall plant was tipped over and dragged through the dining room and living room, There was a trail of dirt and leaves everywhere, plus the garbage had been gone through and was thrown all over the place, and there was no sign of the dog on the first floor. So it was a three-story house. We had a basement or I could go upstairs. I didn't know which way to go, so as I worked my way further into the house, because it kind of wrapped around, it was just like one horrifying scene after another. A pillow off the couch, disemboweled and tossed around the living room. And what I found on the stair landings really freaked me out. I had this really beautiful, collectible Mary Inglebright doll. It was a bride doll. It was a soft sculpture doll. (laughs) I found her lying on the stair landing, her dress over her head. Her bouquet had been ripped off. I'm not sure I ever found that. But anyway, so I could, (laughs) so that was freaky. I mean, if if it had been a person, I would have thought, "Mm, yeah, sexual assault. So I continue upstairs and find that the bathroom garbage has also been gone through and has been dragged throughout the upstairs area and still no sign of the dog. Finally, I find him asleep in his bed, which was on the far side of our bed and I hadn't walked in that far. So he's asleep in his bed, like sacked out, like dead to the world. He was probably like less than two at this point. He was still a puppy. So he's sacked out. And he's got two chewed up socks, of course not a matching pair, in his bed. And one of the hundreds of chapsticks of mine that he ate over his lifetime. (laughs) So anyway, he apparently had quite the big day. And also I want to make a note here that I did the dumb thing here. They say if you walk into your house and see something like that, you should call the cops. But I don't know. I mean, I had to unlock the door, so, you know. So that's just a little glimpse of what it was like living with Bentley. You're going to hear some more about him and his crazy ways in today's show. So speaking of the show, I cannot believe it, but we are at episode 20, which blows my mind. I recently checked the stats, and the show has been downloaded in 20 countries and 40 states. And I just wanted to say thank you. And ask a quick favor, which is to pause the show right now and share the link to howinthehellpodcast.com with a friend or two. It just takes a few seconds. That's the number one way to help keep this show growing. And every time you share it, a unicorn smiles. No, seriously, we smile. So please share. So on today's show, my sister Jenny finds herself in a slippery situation with her Sheltie that takes a while to resolve. Then you won't believe what else Bentley the Beagle gets up to. Stay with us. This is your host, Kim A. Floden, and welcome to How in the Hell Did I Get Here? Quick note, today's show includes swearing. (music) 
In today's first story, Jenny shares about a special time she spent with her adorable Sheltie Fritz that seemed to just last and last and last. You, do you remember Fritz, my super, super sweet little Sheltie that I had um, when our kids were really little? Like I got him before I had kids. Fritz, yeah, you probably remember him. He was such a good dog. But I got him when he was, uh, I think, a year old. And then um, mm-hmm. Scott was born about a year after that. So we had Scott's nursery set up with everything you imagine in the nursery. And if Scott was sleeping in there, Fritz was in there sleeping under the crib. That's how, you know, he was just a good dog. That he was right. to stay with the kids. I went in there to check on Scott while he was napping one day. And Fritz is not only is he in there, he's in there and he's like, he's, I can see from as I'm walking in, he's like chewing on something, eating something. And I'm like, oh God, no, did he get a diaper? You know, <laughs> thinking the worst. Right. And I actually wish it would have been a diaper because that would have been much easier to deal with. What he had done was, we had a, a, a jar of Vaseline on the um, diaper changing table on the, like one of the bottom shelves. And he had found that I got that, got the lid off and he was eating it, eating, eating it. He was, Oh God, family sized tub of Vaseline. And he had it mostly eaten by the time I discovered this. And he was just a greasy mess. Like, you know, Shelby have that yep. collie fur, a lot of fur, a lot of fur, and his whole face, his whole rough around his face, like the mane, just gross, greasy. And how do you get that off? Well, that's where the story <laughs> becomes a long story. <laughs> so my oh my god, my first concern was oh my god, this can't be good, you know. So I, I think I tried to call a vet. There's no vets open. This was an evening. I call the poison control line because I couldn't think of who else to call, and they said, you know, we actually do. You know, we get a lot of poison control calls for animals too. Well, you yourself had one, Kim, didn't you? Right, exactly. So, and they said Vaseline is very, you know, it's not going to hurt him. It's just going to, you know, he'll pass it through. It, w- it will not hurt him at all. So I was like, right. okay, great. So I put him in the tub. I I'm washing him off, washing him off. Get him out of the tub, and he is only slightly less greasy than he was before the bath. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I give him another bath. This time I'm using, um, like, Dawn dishwashing soap. Yeah, I was going to say. That's through grease, right? Right. So same thing. I'm scrubbing him and scrubbing him and scrubbing him. I'm doing everything I can. And it took about, it seems like, three or four baths with with. Oh, my God. His skin must have been raw. To get him. Well, you know, I wasn't scrubbing his skin. It was just, I was just trying to get it out of his fur. Right. And I finally got him to where he was pretty cleaned up. So got him dried off and everything. So think the ordeal is over at this point, right? No. <laughs> no, because I know what's going to happen next. Yeah. So the next day he goes uh, outside and, you know, it's passing through him. Yeah. And it, it, it it was a me- his whole back end now is all greasy. It's just, <laughs> just poopy and greasy, like greasy poop. Yep. And it's again a lot of fur back there. His whole tail. I think it was probably you know uh, loose stool, shall we say? Yeah, uh, like probably like rocket poop. Yeah, I think you know it must have splattered quite a bit. Sorry, that's disgusting, but that's what it was. So commenced to do the same thing with Dawn dishwashing liquid now all across his back end. Ugh. And we get again number of number of times, but finally he's clean. And then the next day he's still pooping it out. So we keep right? going through this like, every day. <laughs> it just went on and on. We're like Fritz is greasy again. And um finally we get through to where it's it's complete. It's through his system and he's clean and he's fine. And this was, Scott was a baby. Scott was born in October. So this was, I'm guessing, you know, like say it was January. (laughs) So, you know, becomes a kind of a funny anecdote until spring when all that shit falls out in the yard and he eats it again in the yard. So the whole the whole cycle <laughs> repeats itself. It was like the, the never-ending, yeah, the circle of Vaseline, the circle of life, <laughs> the circle of the circle of the poop life. Oh God, yeah, it was the never-ending Makuna Katata. What is this? Just name? shut up. You don't know what you're talking about anymore. 
<laughs> I'll tell you what it became known as in my mind. It was the story of the never-ending jar of Vaseline because that Vaseline was with us for a long, long time. Ah, uh, that reminds me of the story. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I know that dogs can eat Vaseline because one time, <laughs> this is a Bentley the Beagle story. Oh, God, that dog had like 20 lives. Anyway, we had taken him up north with us, and that is the time when I was at this point in my life, I was a step parent. So I had a step parent to two Mm -hmm. little boys. So we had taken the kids up to the North shore and we had picked up a bunch of rocks, you know, like, you know, I love rocks Mm -hmm. and they picked up a bunch of rocks, but they were little. So they picked up a bunch of little rocks. Like they were like basically pebbles and stuff. So they had them in a, like a bread bag or a a used bread bag, I think is what it was. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know. We were unpacking, we get home. I come downstairs and there's that bread bag and there are like a few rocks, but not very many. Oh, no. And there's a hole in the bread bag. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, he ate the rocks to get at the breadcrumbs, you know? Because he's a beagle. They do shit like that. They are like the goat of dogs. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, oh, God. So I think this time I had to, I think I called the vet. And the vet was like, okay, yeah, well, you're going to want to move those through. So I'm like, how do I do that? And they said, make (laughs) him eat Vaseline. And I was like, oh, gross. But I'm like, okay. So, of course, the dog would eat freaking anything, obviously. I couldn't get him to eat the Vaseline. Of course. He wasn't interested. So I had to put it on something. You know, I had to, like, make it some gourmet Vaseline meal. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I would say I know for a fact from other stories that that dog really liked bread. So just use it like butter. Mm-hmm. Put it on the bread. <laughs> yeah, that's – I yeah. And so I jammed that dog full of Vaseline, right? Days go by and I'm having a similar experience to what you right. lived through where it's like it's coming out, but I'm seeing no <laughs> rocks. Plus I'm having to go out there and witness, you yeah. know. I'm expecting like a rat-a-tat-tat type thing <laughs> for, for how many rocks are missing. <laughs> Will the kids' rocks ever show up again? What more will I have to go through to find them and return them? Find out after the break. Hey, it's Kim, and thanks so much for listening. And I really hope you're enjoying today's show so far. I'm just popping in to ask you a quick favor, which is to consider helping to support this podcast at Patreon. It's super easy. Just pop over to patreon.com and search for How in the Hell Did I Get Here?, or hit the button on our website at howinthehellpodcast.com. What's in it for you? Well, for one thing, you're helping make a dream come true. And what's better than that? Also, we've got some great perks over there for you, including a chance to get to know myself and my sisters with a special slideshow from our lives, ad-free listening, discounts up to 50% off the Merch in Our Fun store, and free coloring books and more. Check it out today you can choose to support us for as low as $2 a month. Now, back to Bentley and his beagle antics. So, anyway, after a few days, like, the kids have gone home. You know, they they don't know any of this that's going on. So, like, after a few days, they come back. And I'm like, you guys, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I think Bentley ate your rocks. And I'm still waiting for him to come back out. (laughs) <laughs> and meanwhile, poor Bentley is like on this Vaseline diet, you know, I'm like, they've got to be in there. <laughs> no, the kids took the ones they wanted home. Yeah. And I didn't know that. <laughs> right. So poor Bentley was having, yeah, he was Vaseline sandwiches every day and me having to go out there and like look through this shit. Every day for the rocks for my stepkids. Because I'm like, oh, God, now I lost a rock. <laughs> so there's another one where he, me and the kids, like, they wanted to do this, I think. They were about the same. It was about the same mm-hmm. time period. They were little. They wanted to give him a bath. And I'm like, okay, we can give him a bath. You know, he didn't need baths that often, short-haired dog. But we gave him a bath. It was kind of an ordeal. You know, two little kids and a per- one person trying to give a beagle a bath. But we got it done. He was like, he went along with it. He let us do it. We get outside and we're relaxing and Bentley's running around the front yard and he starts rolling all over in the front yard. And they're like, oh, he must be like, you know, trying to get that smell off him. 
Oh, no, no. Yeah, he was trying to get the smell <laughs> yeah. off him oh, God, because he was rolling crap. in like something dead. Yeah, yep. that's my favorite fragrance. Been there many times. <laughs> And then, of course, he comes bounding up to us, and we're all like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, we're like, let's start over with this. That dog. Yeah, and then in the meantime, you have to find that dead thing and remove it from your property. That's thought was fun. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because they can find a dead thing at, like, 400,000 paces. Yeah. No kidding. Well, especially a beagle. Yeah. You told me a story about him when the, you guys had the carpenter over. You know, the last house I lived in, in Minneapolis, we had a lot of work done on that house. And when Bentley was about 10 and a half, he went blind. So mm -hmm. he was blind, but that he's yeah. got along okay. I mean, we, we worked with it. and But I think, you know, when they say one sense goes, the others kick into high gear. Well, his nose was already in high fucking gear. Now it went to like uber high fucking gear. And so we were having a um, contractor at the house and was, and we had put Bentley in the kitchen, like blocked in with his crate. Oh my gosh. But he was, he was free to roam, but he had to stay. He was in the kitchen because they were coming in and out and you know, the door was right there. So I get a call from the contractor and I'm like, oh, this is odd. Cause I don't really know what to, what to tell the contractor about anything, but <laughs> right. So he's like, uh, yeah, ma'am, I just am calling to let you know that your dog is on the kitchen counter. Wow. Yep. And I'm like, what? He's like, um, yeah, we think he pushed his crate over there and jumped up on his crate and then jumped up on the counter and he ate a loaf of bread. What do you want us to do? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, well, you know, for first of all, if he could have gotten to the refrigerator and gotten it open, he would have had a freaking <laughs> sandwich. Because, I mean, he was resourceful, that dog, even blind. So I'm like, yeah, take him take him off the counter. But, oh, my God, yeah, he was on the counter. He ate a loaf of bread. I have come. I came home one time. Well, he drank that whole beer that time. Another time, he drank, like, a six-pack of non-alcoholic beer. Why would he even go for this? I can see them being attracted to an open beer because you can smell it. And it's, you know, yeasty and yummy. And But, yeah, a can. of It was on a bench. Somehow he got it down punctured all the cans and sucked it down. And I'm like, what about that made you think you should, I mean, could he smell the beer through the non-alcoholic beer through the can? That dog was like MacGyver. Oh, geez. Totally. That yeah. He was, he was a crazy dog. He kept us on our toes for sure. I mean, really? I mean, I love that dog, but when he died, I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I felt like I relaxed for the no, first time in 13 and a half go. years. It was like having a crazed infant in your house, toddler, like a crazy toddler. Yeah, I mean, he tried to electrocute, or he did electrocute himself one time, and then chewed, literally, like, chomped on a cord, plugged in cord, and it was like, <laughs> you know, then to the, off to the vet. Yeah, then, like, two months later, he ate ant poison, and then about two months after that, he ran away from home, and I'm like, obviously, the dog's trying to kill himself. He does not want to be with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i that was my thought and well but then we found him like two blocks away at somebody else's back door that looked just like ours scratching at it like what the hell let me in you would think he would know you know speaking of scent you'd think he would know he's at home or not <laughs> right just please let me in please don't tell anybody i'm here just let me in right but you know the tarot and the shocking who knows what he'd been through at this point yeah yep and he was trying to get away from us jenny <laughs> He probably thought knew he was at somebody else's house. <laughs> oh, and he did dodge across like traffic on Xerxes, which is a bus route. Yeah, I remember me and the neighbor lady just screaming at each other across the street, like, no! And the dog's like doing like Frogger across the street. <laughs> like, it was a four lane road <laughs> with buses. Yep. Yeah, he was, yeah, you could not relax. Yeah, it's remarkable he lived as long as he did then. And, yeah, it's remarkable I lived as long as I did with him because, I mean, seriously, he probably took years off my life. I mean, he was a good dog, but he was cra He was crazy. He was a crazy dog. Well, this family is attracted to crazy pets. And people. Thanks for listening. Today's show was produced by Kim A. Floden and features myself and Jenny Gardner. 
To see pictures of Bentley the Beagle, otherwise affectionately known as the Hound from Hell, visit the show notes at howinthehellpodcast.com or join us on our Facebook group. Big thanks to Silent Partner for our theme song, Seventh Floor Tango, and our ad music, Blue Skies. And thank you to our sponsor, the Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet. Search Etsy.com for Anti-Opiate Medical Alert Bracelet and use the code PODCAST to save 15%. Meet you back here next week for more How in the Hell Did I Get Here stories. Until then, pay attention, my friends. You just never know when you might find yourself saying, How in the hell did I get here? Oh yeah, there was also the time I went to pick him up at the kennel where I used to board him at. And I go in there and it was like a split level. So, you know, there you had to walk upstairs or you could go downstairs where the actual dogs were boarded. So I go in there and I go upstairs to, you know, break him out of jail basically. And all the dogs are like going crazy down in the kennel area. Like they're barking. Like I've never heard this happen before anytime I've ever been there. It was like every dog in the kennel area was freaking out. And I was like, what's going on down there? And they're like, oh, we, we don't know. The dogs just started doing that about 10 minutes ago. And I'm like, well, no one's gone down there to check on them. They're like, well, no, we've been super busy. So, um, you know, let's, we can go down and get Bentley though. And I was like, okay, so we go down there and yeah, the dogs are freaking out. Because somehow, of course, Bentley, a.k.a. Houdini, has gotten out of his pen. And it was like a run. I don't even know how he did this. I mean, I don't know. He's gotten out and he is like running from cage to cage. Like, (laughs) I felt like he was trying to organize a breakout. He's like running from cage to cage, encouraging all the rest of the dogs to, you know, break out. Follow me. Let's go. So, yeah, that's just another little fun Bentley moment.